Welcome to regression. Regression is a huge topic. Um, in my grad studies, I had three entire courses just on regression, and we were really even just starting uh, to scrape the surface. So it's this enormously useful topic. And let me give you some examples of how it's used. Um, stock market predictions. So uh, I have a colleague of mine put together a model. The idea behind regression is you're, you're gathering all this data, uh, kind of like you do with a correlation where you have two variables um, that you're measuring on everybody, uh, but you might have three or four or a hundred. You have all these different predictor variables and you're trying to predict some outcome. So in a stock market, of course, you'd want to uh, predict the outcome of a stock, the value of a stock. And in this particular case, uh, really in general with the predictions, um, there's always some uncertainty around it. But the better the data, uh, the more accurate the regression model, the better you can make realistic predictions. Um, to give you an example of, of predictions and how they work, uh, sports is filled with predictions of, of what's going to happen in any given outcome, uh, with any given game, uh, who's going to win. And there's, of course, betting going on, on on this also. Regression models are very big in, in the area of sports. These are just some, some examples. So a question I have for you, let's take these three sports, basketball, soccer, and volleyball. So you can use regression models and statistical models to predict who will win any given basketball game or soccer game or volleyball game. Uh, but like with any prediction, there's always some uncertainty. Um, so the question is, which of these sports is hardest to predict, at least under our current understanding of the sports and statistics, and which is the easiest? So pause this video for a second and, and make your guesses. Which do you think is the hardest of these three sports to predict, and which is the easiest? So as it turns out, um, basketball of these three is the easiest to predict. Second is volleyball. The hardest of these three sports to predict is soccer. So if you're going to watch a soccer game, uh, setting down who the winner will be uh, is most unknown, even by the people who are putting betting odds on the game. And probably one of the main reasons is the number of points. So soccer, a couple points can be a huge difference in a game. Uh, whereas basketball, um, a couple of points here and there isn't going to make much of a difference. It, I mean, the, the final scores are often 10, 20 points uh, away from each other. So a, a single point is much more powerful for impacting the score in soccer than it is for basketball. And, and volleyball is somewhere in between there. Um, I was kind of curious when I was in grad school, I mentioned those three classes I was in. I, I wanted to see it in action. I, I wanted to um, really see if regression was powerful. And I thought, well, if, if regression is all it's cracked up to be, then I should be able to use it to gain an advantage in a game. So I just chose this game, uh, Settlers of Catan. And you don't really need to know much about the game other than the fact that there's some starting positions that you put your pieces in, and, and that can impact um, how you how you would uh, have an advantage or disadvantage during the game. So I found this online three player version of it. So that way I could, I didn't have to <laughs> rope my friends into playing this a lot. And each row here of this spreadsheet is a time I played. So you can see 48 rows. This is before I ran any regression. I was just playing it and I was trying different things um, to kind of collect data. So each column here is a variable that I was measuring. Uh, for my game. And then the most important, the outcome here is this next to last column where you see these um, ones, twos, or threes. Whenever you see a green, that's a game that I won. A white is a game that I lost. And if you would tally these up, it, I, I won about one third of the games that I was playing, of, of the Settlers of Catan online games. And you can see I wasn't necessarily getting better at the end. I was kind of, I mean, I started off on a three game winning streak and then had a big cold spell here. But in general, I won about one third, which is what you would expect ish uh, on a three player game. If all players were about equal, you would win about one third of the time. So then after these 48 games, I took all this data and I put it into a regression 
So my outcome variable here was this next to last column. The, the predictor variables were the rest of the variables there. And I ran the regression. I took those results and I changed my strategy based on those regression results. And then I played a bunch more games. And this is what happened. So this is games number 54 through 77. Um, you can see here, again, green is where a game that I won. You can see what happened. I, I ended up winning about two thirds of the games uh, after I started employing these strategies I gained from regression. And this, to be honest, uh, much more so than my professors telling me that regression was powerful, this little experience uh, changed my mind towards regression and, and really is what made me start to see the potential of it. And since then, I've used it quite a bit, even in some of my daily life or personal struggles. Uh, it, it's a really powerful tool. So that's why we're studying it in this course. So I'm giving you that prelude because we're going to do some calculations. And I know this can cause panic in a lot of people, but um, I assure you it's not too bad. So if you remember back to algebra, you may remember the equation of a line that was called the slope intercept form, y equals mx plus b. And in that case, m was the slope. This was uh, what, what controlled the relationship between x and y, because as x would get bigger, then it would get multiplied by m, and that would, that would make y bigger. Uh, and then b was just kind of hanging out here as the y-intercept. That's where the line would cross the y-axis. So we're going to use that same equation, essentially, but in regression, for whatever reason, actually, I know what the reason is. This, is. this is what you probably saw in algebra. The regression equation looks just a little bit different. So the y becomes a y hat. And this isn't a big deal. This is just because we're not dealing with an actual value here. So the things on the right are actual. Well, the x is an actual value. Uh, this is a predicted value because we're, we're making a predicted stock price, a predicted outcome of a game. Um, it's a prediction, and that little symbol tells us it's a prediction. So that's not a big change. The other change is these two often get switched. So the y-intercept now comes first, and the slope times the x comes second. And the reason why in a multiple regression, so when you have more than one predictor, then we have um, multiple x values, so x1, x2, x3, x4. And so we just want to get the y-intercept out of the way right away. The point being here, when you're trying to find the slope, in general, don't try to figure out, oh, is it first or second? Just see if it's attached to the x. Whatever number is attached to the x, that's what your slope is going to be. Okay, I think we need to dive straight into an example before too much panic ensues here. So this would be a uh, some data I collected on a stats class a while ago. And this was on the rating scale uh, 0 to 100. How physically active are you? So 100 is very active. These people right here, incredibly active. And then 0 to 100, um, how much time do you spend outdoors? And you can see we cut off at 80 because there were no scores above 80. So 80 was the highest, highest anyone rated themselves in how much time they spent outdoors. So each of these little blue dots is a former stat student, was a student in that class. If we take, for example, this dot, that person rated themselves as about 70 in terms of physically active and about a 50 in terms of how much time they spent outdoors. So we get all these points, plot them. We get a best fitting line. Uh, this is called the regression line, and we'll look later how we actually come up with that or how software comes up with that. Um, but the equation of that line is right here. So this is um, predicted y equals 12 plus, this is the slope here, 0.68 times x. And I find it pretty helpful to put in the variable names instead of just leaving it as y and x. So instead of y, I'm going to say outdoors. The predicted outdoor score of a person, or of a student in this class more precisely, equals 12, that's the y-intercept, plus 0.68 times whatever their physically active score was. So if they're... If they rated themselves a 10 on physically active, then we'd have 10 times 0.68. That would be 6.8 plus 12. So their predicted outdoor score would be an 18.8 if they ranked themselves as a 10 in terms of physically active. So here's a question for you. What would be the predicted outdoors rating for a student in the class if we already know that they rated themselves as a 50 on physically active? And you may want to try to pause this 
See if you can figure it out. Okay, so let's take a look. We have this equation. This was the regression equation. And because their score was 50 on physically active, we plug in a 50 for that physically active variable. This is, this is the same as our x variable. It's the, the variable that's here on the horizontal axis. And then we multiply these two numbers together to get 34. And finally, we add the 12 and the 34 to get 46. So if a student had a uh, outdoors rating of, or sorry, a physically active rating of 50, their predicted outdoor score would be 46. And we can see this if, if they were here as a 50, we go up to the line. So right here, this entire regression line are the predictions. And if we go up to here, go across, we see that that's about a 46. And you can see the students who actually did rate themselves as a 50, well, they ranged. One of them was down here at 20, 31, a uh, little above 50 maybe. So on average, we'd think that they'd be about a 46. However, um, it really depends how good our regression equation is. And that goes all the way back to the R squared from correlation. The higher the R squared value, the more accurate this prediction is going to be. Let's try another one. So what if someone rated themselves as an 80 on physically active? Go ahead and pause this and give it a try. What would be their predicted outdoors rating? Okay, there's our original equation. We'd put in 80 for physically active, uh, multiply these two terms together, and then finally uh, add these to get 66. So if they had a physically active score of 80, uh, we would predict their outdoors score was 66. And again, we can see this. Here's the 80. We follow that up to the prediction line, the regression line, trend line. All of this is the same. It's that blue line right there. We follow that across, and that should be at about 66, which we see that, that it is. Now, what if it was backwards? What if instead of knowing their physically active rating, we, we definitely wanted to get a predicted score of 60. And we wanted to know, well, what would they have to uh, rate themselves on physically active in order to get a predicted score of 60? So if you think you might know how to do this, pause this and give it a try. Okay, we have that same original equation, but now instead of knowing what the physically active score is, we have this 60 that we want to be our predicted outdoor score. So we go ahead and plug that in, 60 for that predicted outdoors. And now the equation looks a little different. We're gonna to have to solve it a little different algebraically. Um, we're trying to get physically active all by itself, solving for x in this case. So we subtract 12 from both sides. And then it's still not all by itself. We need to divide both sides by 0.68. And that would give us about a 71 in terms of physically active. So if someone was about a 71 in terms of physically active, we go up here, that's what would give us a 60 in terms of the predicted outdoor score. Now you could, visually, you could do this backwards. If you know you want a predicted outdoor score of 60, you could just go up to 60 on the outdoors, go over to the line and drop down. So you know your answer is gonna be about 70. Uh, but we do want to be able to go through the calculation to get a little more precise uh, estimate. Okay, and finally, one, one last thing. Um, students sometimes ask, what, what happens if you would flip the two variables? So instead of physically active being down here, physically active is on the side and outdoors is right here. Remember we said that the R value, the correlation coefficient R, uh, would be the same for both of these data sets. Doesn't matter which is your X and which is your Y. The regression line, however, would not be the same. Um, it might be something like this uh, when we do, when we predict outdoors from physically active and maybe something like this. I, I don't think this is quite right, but something like this if we were predicting uh, physically active from outdoors. So it all depends on which variable we wanna predict. We put that on the Y axis. I like to think of it as the Y the WHY of why we're even running the regression. The why is what we want to predict. It's what we want to find out more about. Okay, and that's it for this video.